Hello and welcome to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract. In this Explorer, we're going to take it a little slow. I've got nothing particularly planned. We've been working on a bug, well, a feature, we'll call it, in Zim Animate. Well, let me show you. So here we are um, making the Zim marquee, and this is just the start of it. We've got an ad on the Zim site, or a promo right there. Bring that into, there it is. A promo, and right now it's just an image, but I'd like to put more promos there for, for various things that we've been doing lately, such as all these guys here. The new um, Zimon and Shape Tweens and Model View Controller, Node Package Manager things, etc. And it would be neat. This one, it was sort of like, ah, oh, so close. Look, uh, I press that, and it goes to the real thing. This is this is really Zim, and it would be very neat to put the real Zim in there. So that's that's what we've done. Is we're now making an ad. Let me refresh this. Zim Retina, and oh well, <laughs> this is what we're working on. Going to the going to the next one. So have a marquee that will play a bunch of these, and the marquee will have the indicators down the sides of it like that that lets you go through these interactive works or automatically plays them. And what we're preparing is the ability to animate something and then later reanimate it in the same way without maybe calling a function. So we could put all that in a function and rebuild the thing and and run the function. But it would be kind of handy to have the animations, when they complete, have a way to just say, replay that please, at any time, and it replays the last animation. So that's uh, that's what we're working on, and we've got it almost there. So the, the first technique we did was, hey, don't even end the animation. When it ends, we've got this thing called clean. So there's a clean parameter that, that we're thinking of adding. And the clean parameter, if you set that to true, well, it is set to true by default. It, it Once it finishes the animation, that's it. It's gone. It takes away all the IDs, closes the animation, like it completely finishes that. And that's what it does now. But you can't then restart that. So if you set clean to false, it wouldn't do all the cleaning. And you could reset your, uh, well, we'll go to some code here, the percent completes. So when the marquee's done, we could set the percent completes back to zero. That puts them at their starting spots. And then when we want to run it again, we pause animate. Oh, this is all paused animate. So we pause the animate on all these things. And then when we uh, run it again, we unpause it. Either that or the, I, I think the by setting the clean to false, it uh, it's it, like it pauses the animate at the end, so you don't really need to do that. Anyway, but you've got to run it again later. Well, this is what happened when we did this. Uh, see, we refresh. Here comes the animation. Note that there's a wait and there's various waits. Then we close it and we bring it back. But when we bring it back, there's no waits. <laughs> it's like, oh darn. What happens with the animation and the percent complete and stuff uh, is a wait in Zim Animate is actually a separate tween. And then when we loop and rewind and stuff, we ignore the initial wait. So at that point, it's all one tween again. So there's if you ever have a wait, there's actually two tweens involved. The first tween which then calls the second tween, which can be complex in terms of looping or rewinds, etc. So what's happening is at the end, it's completely forgotten the first wait tween. And when we do the percent complete back to zero, it's only the percent complete on the last tween that was done, not the wait tween. <sighs> and this is quite complex stuff. <laughs> that we're getting into. So here's here's animate, um, and I'll let you know sort of what what we were looking at to to solve that issue. Here's here's the animate function. So we're bringing in an animation, and first of all, there's a whole bunch of properties that can be set on what's called a create JS tween. So we have to transfer a whole bunch of Zim properties into uh, create JS 
properties on, on a tween are ready for, and some of those are there and some of them aren't some of the some of the stuff the initial parameters of animate which are many these types of things uh, where'd they go target uh, the properties that you want to animate the time the ease the call parameters the weight the weight call the weighted parameters the loop the loop count the loop weight uh, etc the rewind weight the rewind call blah 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 blah, blah, blah. sequence calls sequence re -re -re -blah, blah, 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 from sets events dynamics <laughs> dragging clamping blah 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 okay so you can see that there's a fair bit there some of those get transferred into directly into the create js tween and some of them are handled by zim many of them are handled by zim so we've got the sequence so there's various things i said i said i'd slow down but i'm not really obviously not going to go through all this code with you and this is sort of trying to get to where we want to talk about and then we can slow down a bit so here's uh, handling a sequence. So all that gets done before tweening even happens. There's some defaults that get set. Then we handle an animation series. That's when there's an array of animations all within one animation. So we prepare that series and the IDs and we run this master thing. And what that does, what both of those do, the sequence and the series, is just calls the tween again. Like it breaks it up, if it's a series, it breaks it up into individual tweens and calls each one. If it's a, a sequence, then the same deal. That's a bunch of tweens on all of the things in a container, for instance, or an array of things. And these just call the tween again, uh, but individuals, and you get, oh, that shape tween information. Did it say yet? Wait. No, that's still okay. So shape tween information was also inserted in there to be able to handle shape tween information, and then finally a normalized tween comes through. So this is just a single tween, and there could be multiple multiples of them depending on what what you run animate on. And now a single tween comes in here, and we set it up for the path and for dynamic animation, and we handle color tweening. We protect various loops uh, with busy things. We've got whole sets of ID sets and IDs to handle so that you can pause a whole um, whole bunch of animations with the same ID, that kind of thing. There's a handling ZIC for um, different random random things or series things, etc. for properties. Uh, relative values as well as so here's um, percent complete issues so this is all for dynamic coding and handling percent completes along paths and that kind of stuff path animation setup is here um, preparing start values if you use from so from was inserted in there that kind of stuff uh, continue path animation setups dragging along a path so there's dragging along a path this stuff like that um, sorry for all the ums, <laughs> but, you know, um is the sound you make as you're scrolling. Um, orientation setup, so handling whether it's facing this way or that way, or if you're dragging, which when you let go, which way does it go forward, flip setups. That's the end of the Neo updates. Loop and rewind setup. Okay, so this is getting into the the main original animation before all that other stuff was added to it as you saw this is handling loop and rewind at the time we either didn't didn't sort of weren't ready to work with um tw uh, create js's tweens uh, looping and rewind or we didn't even know it could do it i think we knew it could loop but we didn't know it could rewind and now later we saw that it can rewind but anyway we went in and co coded all of that over top of it. So the, the looping and the rewind and the rewind calls, the other thing is we aren't using the chain, the CreateJS's chained way of doing tweening, which means we can't just throw a call in anywhere we want. We're not doing chain chaining because it then didn't chain the way that the rest of Zim chains. Like it was nice to see the chaining there, but it was all on the it was all in the tween not on the object. So therefore you couldn't tw you couldn't chain an animation onto an object uh, along with things like centering it and dragging it and various other things. So we had to back out of the 
create JS way of tweening, and that meant that we had to accommodate all of the callbacks at the different times, like callbacks when you rewind, callbacks when you loop, callbacks when you um, uh, wait, and, and these types of things. So all the callbacks are handled by Zim, not by CreateJS. And they're proceeding to prepare those things in here. And we're trying to get to this, this line right here, where we actually make a CreateJS tween. So there it is. <laughs> That's the CreateJS tween, and all of that code you saw is sitting on top of that to be able to manage and make tweening more convenient uh, and also settle in with the way that Zim handles things. So there's the tween call, and this is the weighted tween right here. So if the weight is bigger than zero, we do that, else we call tween one. And note that the weighting tween right there, this CreateJS tween, does its stuff. And then when it's done, it calls tween one. That way, what is good about this is we can pause the tween. And since it pauses this, this other one won't run. And when we say go, eventually this wait can, carries on and calls that tween. Once this wait happens, there's no real reason, or there hasn't been any reason to hold on to it. So we just go to the next tween. This, uh, this is sort of the major tween right here where we're passing in all of the things in special ways, <laughs> etc. That's one of them anyway. There's also, uh, that was for rewind and loops, I think. So up here, yeah. So if we've got a rewind, this is the stuff we have to do to handle that rewind. There's the tween call for it, or, or actually, I guess that's a tween call for it. Else, if it's not rewind, then it's a sort of a simpler procedure, but you've got the wait again. And there's the, the tween call that doesn't have a rewind involved. And then there's various tickers. Uh, so let's put an F1 on here, like that. So F1 sets a bookmark for me, or that's what I've got to set a bookmark, and I can get back to it easily. And we'll just show you the end, since we were exploring. We'll show you the end of uh, Zim Animate. So that's in a sense, the hub, the, the two tweens there, but we also have the various tickers that handle things. And we've got a number of tickers to be able to handle animation along a path so that this gets called out. It does this type of thing along a path, flip checks and orientation checks. So that's all path. There's stuff for drag and a path. Drag actually has its own ticker going already up above. This is just some other things. Um, handling uh, masks, so applying mask is is also complex to be able to apply things that are being animated that are masks. We have to handle that. When we're done animating, oh, so this is sort of the original done animating thing. Oh, and do we loop again or that kind of stuff? Or have we looped enough times? And if we have, then um, so be it. Function get start. Okay, that's just as we go in, we might be doing a from. So if we're doing a from, we have to get sort of certain starting things that apply those. That that may come in, uh, could be important to us. Uh, we're going through that. I took a look at it. Various busy things, pause and stop management. So this is all uh, pausing and stopping and dealing with the IDs and the ID sets and stuff. We didn't, I forgot to show you how we go through setting IDs. It's complex. And this is us ending tickers and IDs and splicing out IDs from lists and that kind of stuff when we either pause or stop animating and making sure that various tickers are ended. Um, right. And there's the final stop animate right there. The other things were sub. Uh, or functions, <laughs> say subroutines. The other ones are subroutines that we're running. <laughs> and so uh, 1983. Uh, anyway, yeah, it was, it was coding in 83. Can you tell? Uh, right, so extra setup stuff. Oh, extra is the ability to animate properties based on animation itself. So that's really cool. Like, so as you animate um, along a time, you're also animating things like the depth or the size of it as it's going in, in depth or the rotation of, of something, scale of something, that kind of thing. Size and scale, I guess, same thing. So that's extra work. 
uh, dynamic animation. So this is all the stuff right in here. Well, this is the action stuff for dynamic animation based on percent speeds and uh, ties in now. Now Zim Animate can be put into an accelerator and you can accelerate any animation with uh, with things like sliders or based on your mouse positions. You can basically scrub animations is what's happening with this stuff. And also it helps with things like animating long paths and stuff like that. There's the pause, it looks like. Uh, this is the code for pause, kind of similar. End of Neo updates. And there we go. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, an overview, an exploration of Zim Animate. I'm sitting in here now, it brought, brought us back up to the tween, that, that bookmark there. And the thought was, if this tween right here was being lost, we can play this one again. We can play this tween again by just uh, not ever clearing it and say, set the percent complete to zero. Then it will play this. But we don't have a reference to that. So what I wanted to do was put that into a function. And put that into a function. <laughs> it was amazing. Stupid. I backed out of it, but it was a pretty amazing code. Mm -hmm. Put it into a function and stored it on the tween, and then realized, oh well, wait a minute. I can't put the tween in here and store the function on it because I haven't. I'm making the tween inside the function. So uh, referred to it as a variable, and then inside the function set the tween, which is right here, I guess. Set uh, the tween sort of tween dot saved function or whatever function blah, 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 is equal to and then I reference the variable I put all of that in a function uh, which, which is that and um, made it available on the tween so outside uh, back back in our code here if we wanted to we could do something right right now uh, what I want is restart the tween, and that, that would run the, right now this is stored on the rect instead of the uh, zim tween. I'd rather not go to the zim tween. That's a reference to zim tweens. Uh, dot start tween. That's where I had stored it initially, then realized it might be handier to store it right on the target. The target is the rect. So uh, reverted back there to the target. Um, Story on the target, we could start it like this. And that was great, except something happened. Um, it did start, I ran this again, and that one wanted to run tween2, but I said, no, we can, instead of running tween2, we can find out where we called this function from. If it's just right, right in here, uh, if it was just right in here, then we'll, we'll call tween2, but if it's called from an external place, we'll pass in a parameter saying, hey, wait a minute. Uh, just restart an animation. <laughs> Give a callback function. <laughs> so pass me in a, a callback function. I'll start that for you. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then that would do the the unpausing of, of this one down here. So I started in on that and then realized, well, we don't have initial conditions, so all of the the settings at the start of the tween need to be set. And so I was looking back up through here to find out how to find the original original properties and reset those, which I kind of already was doing at, at some point uh, in there. So I was looking for that function to make available and then realized, oh, okay, this is probably not the way to go. I think the way to go is just make this right here, rec.startween, recall the whole thing, with the same parameters. So that's the idea up top here now is this would be a good time for a page up i think uh, i've been learning recently you know hey i gotta stop scrolling my mouse wheel for for stuff like this working on the blob uh, don't don't scroll your mouse wheel when we're on a blob so page page up or making sure you keep i usually keep at the start of what i'm working on an f1 right there and that way i can find the bookmark uh, more easily so just recently, what we've been doing when we made Zimon, Zimon is a way that you can store an object that isn't a string, a number, an array, or an object literal in as, as a string form. So it's like JSON, except any object can be stored on it, like a circle, a triangle, a particle emitter, any of the Zim objects can be stored in Zimon. Isn't that cool? As a string, and when it when you load 
that information again, it turns it back into an object. So I've been working with these, uh, these parameters here. As we bring them in, we get uh, the arguments. And we're taking the, that arguments array and turning it into an array. Oh, don't go anywhere with that. We're taking that arguments array, turning it into an array, and storing it as the start param. So as long as the object has that available, Zimon can recreate it from these from the arguments that were here. So what we can do is something similar. We can just recreate the animation from the arguments that were passed in initially. Uh, Still not quite sure. I don't think that's going to reset the original. The, it's not going to reset the original um, settings, even though we're calling the function, uh, the animate uh, method. The original object, it's already animated its properties to a final destination. It's not going to automatically start those again at the right place. So that was this command right in here, not these guys kiboshing that root and bringing in this root, except for maybe, I think we can make it optional, where if you want, you can reset the tween. And that, so that will be a function available that will just reset all of the starting properties that it's, that's animated. We only really have to look through the properties it's wanting to animate and just make sure that we start those at the original values again. So that will be made available, and what we'll do is we'll automatically call that. When we restart the tween, we'll, we'll reset the properties and run the function again. So that is what uh, we're exploring. Hopefully, if, <laughs> if you're still here, you, you found that kind of interesting and, and kind of awesome. I mean, it's, it is a lot of complex code. That's one of the, the more complex methods in Zim is the animate function. But there might be others that come close. Uh, things like the blob and squiggle, a lot of work done in there, and initially things like the layout class and particle emitters and that kind of stuff, they're all quite complex in behind here. So uh, that was Zim Explore here at zimjs.com. I am Dr. Abstract. Come on in to Zim, and if you haven't joined us on Slack, oh, by all means, come on in. We're, we're friendly and happy. We'd love to have you there. So that's zimjs.com slash slack. It's uh, free, free and friendly. Ciao.